Today we're going to talk about the five best exercises for recovering your knee. Now I've done other videos on knee pain, but I haven't done any videos on how to strengthen the knee, especially after an injury or in the process of recovering. These five exercises not only strengthen the muscles of the knee, but provide symmetry between the left and right knee and also the muscles on the front of the knee versus the muscles on the back of the knee, which is very, very important because normally a person will injure uh, either one knee or an ankle and that sets up a pattern of putting the pressure on the opposite knee and over time that can really create some asymmetrical stress. So let's say 20 years ago you hurt your right ankle and now the left knee is hurting simply because of the years of compensation that occurred. So I am going to show you a very powerful balancing technique um, for pain and just balancing the muscles after this video. But let's just talk about these five exercises. Now, just to learn the anatomy real quick, you have this, the longest bone in the body, which is also the strongest. It's called the femur. And that's the top part of the leg, which is covered by the front muscles, the thigh muscles called the quadriceps. And then the muscles in the back part are called the hamstrings, okay? Now the knee joint is really the largest hinge joint in the body, okay? So you have flexion and extension with some slight minor rotation. But this top femur bone is connected with a bottom tibia bone, which is the second longest bone in the body. And so this is where a lot of weight has to be supported on this joint right here. And then on the side of the tibia, on the outside of the leg, okay, we're looking at the viewpoint of someone's right knee, okay, going from the front. On the outer part of this tibia, this lower bone here, you have another bone called the fibula. The purpose of the fibula is to really stabilize that ankle, to allow you to perform all the amazing movements and running and different uh, motions that you can actually perform. And then we have this thing called the patella. That's your kneecap. That's right in front. And that glides right over the tendon that's connected to the quadricep femoris. It's just going to glide over that tendon right there. And then you have four ligaments. Ligaments go from bone to bone, okay? A tendon goes from a muscle to a bone. And the purpose of those ligaments are just to prevent uh, motion going from to the lateral outside or the inside or the front or the back or twisting. So it keeps everything really, really nice and tight. You also have this very hard piece of uh, cartilage that is connected to the bone on the top and the bottom. That is called articular cartilage. And then right in between, you have this little shock absorber called the meniscus. So that's your anatomy lesson of the knee joint. So let's dive right into the four exercises. The first exercise we're going to talk about is the quad stretch. So the quad stretch improves uh, the hip flexor, which is up in the hip, as well as the quadricep itself. And we're going to be balancing out the flexibility of your left quadricep to your right quadricep. So basically, you're going to be standing up, supporting yourself uh, with a wall. Okay, so you'll be holding on the wall with one hand. And with the other hand, you'll grab your foot or ankle as you're pulling it up into your hamstring. And you're going to be stretching the quadricep. Make mental note of the flexibility of the right side versus the left side, because usually you're going to find one that is way tighter than the other one, and that's the one you want to work on more. And so then you're just going to stretch and hold for 30 seconds, okay, each side, and you're just going to do that twice. Okay, so that's the quad stretch. The next stretch is going to be the heel to calf stretch. For this one, you're going to have your hands on the wall, and you're going to move back so your toes are facing forward. Make sure the heels are flat with your knee slightly bent. Then you're going to lean into the stretch and hold for 30 seconds. And then when you're done with that, you'll do the opposite leg. And so you're going to do this exercise back and forth just two times. So this exercise is going to stretch the back part of your leg as compared to the quad stretch, which stretches the front part of the leg. All right, the next stretch is called the half squat. And this is more of a strengthening exercise where you're going to stretch the quadricep, the glutamus muscle, which is your butt muscle, as well as your hamstrings. So you're going to get in a standing position, and then you're going to slightly squat downward. And make sure that your feet are shoulder width apart. You're just going to squat down about 10 inches at a halfway point. So you're not all the way down to a 45 degree angle. And at this point, you're just going to pause for a few seconds 
and then stand up so you're completely erect. So basically this is a half squat or a partial squat and you're basically going to do this 10 reps and you'll do two to three sets of these 10 repetitions. We want to keep it easy. We don't want to create too much stress, but we do want to start building up the quadricep, the buttocks muscle, as well as your hamstring. All right, number four, let's talk about the hamstring curl. Now with this exercise, you'll be standing facing a wall. For support, your feet will be hip width apart. You're going to lift one foot up, bend the knee, and raise your heel towards the ceiling. Go as far as you can while keeping your upper body still with your hips facing forward. Hold for five to 10 seconds. You'll do 10 repetitions two to three times. All right, now that you did the hamstring curl, let's move to number five, and that's called the straight leg raisers. Now it's important to know that your quadricep and your hip flexors um, help raise the leg. And so this exercise will help strengthen both of those flexors. Now, what you want to do is you want to flex your foot upward so you feel your shin muscles contracting. And as you do this exercise and get better, you want to add some weight to your ankle. So you can start off with adding a five pound weight and then eventually going up to maybe a seven or eight pound weight and then even a 10 pound weight. But for now, we're going to do it without weights. I would highly suggest using some type of a mat while you're laying down, or you can do this on the carpet. So you're going to be laying down on the floor with one leg bent and the other leg straight out in front of you. And so now you're going to contract the quadricep on the leg that is extended straight and slowly raise it off the floor until it's at the same height as the bent knee. Then you're going to pause for about five seconds and then lower the position down to the mat and repeat for 10 repetitions. Do this two to three times. All right, those are the five exercises that are going to put symmetry and strength and flexibility into your legs, which surround your knees. Now, the next important video to watch is how to get rid of knee pain. Okay, you're going to like this video. Check it out. Hey, before you leave, I just wanted to give you a little quick history on some of the books that I wrote. This was one of the first books it's called Dr. Berg Body Shapes. It was my attempt at um, writing about body types. Uh, what was very interesting about this book is I actually did all the images myself. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, they look actually not quite as professional as some of the uh, images that I have in the new book. But anyway, this is my first attempt right here called Dr. Berg's Body Shape Diets. Uh, and then I wrote a book um, more extensive called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. I don't even have a copy anymore, actually, um, because it's outdated. Uh, the next book, uh, I put about a thousand hours into this one right here called The New Body Type Guide. Major updates on the body types. Uh, I put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it has professional images, graphics, all sorts of things. Now, the problem with this book is it doesn't really describe what this is really about. Body types are only a small portion of what's in this book. And that's why I changed the name to The Healthy Keto Plan. Okay, if you happen to have this book, you don't really need this book because there's some only very, very minor updates. But if you don't have this, you need to get this one right here. Um, this book goes into every single detail that you would ever want to know about. It goes into the seven principles of fat burning, it goes into hormones, uh, the body types, the basic keto plan. It goes into intermittent fasting. I talk about the 10 fat burning triggers and blockers and fat burning strategies with a lot of details in every single chapter. I go into body issues that interfere with losing weight. Um, there's very few people that just have a weight problem. They have a lot of body issues, whether it's sleeping problems, uh, stress problems, inflammation, menopause. I cover that extensively in this book. Then I talk about how to get rid of stress and I show you a technique. Uh, then I get into exercising. And then I have a lot of really good recipes in this book as well. So uh, this is a good reference guide. Um, on my website, if you get this book, you get this one free. It's called Healthy Keto Intermittent Fasting. This is the shortcut, uh, quick guide to this book. And uh, the reason I created this book is to have you within 45 minutes learn how to do keto, okay, in intermittent fasting, exactly what you need to do. Then 
you can fill in the blanks with this book right here. So right now I'm doing a special. If you get this book, you get this one totally free, or you can go to Amazon and get these individually. So I just want to clarify the difference between this book and this updated one right here. If you don't have this, you need to get this right here. That way you can get the exact correct information to do it healthily.